Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Traveler from GoTracks. First, let's talk about the looks. The frame on the Traveler is probably one of my favorite parts. We've got all of this internal cabling, which makes the bike look really slick. The color that they have here, it's this reddish, orangish color. Not quite red, not quite orange. I really like it, especially when it's paired with the green here. So the whole vibe of the bike, pretty much enjoy. So all in all, from a looks perspective, I feel like they really nailed it with this bike. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. The first thing to consider here is the price tag. Normally this bike is priced around $1,100. I believe right now they're running a sale for about 960, something like that. But most of the time it looks like it sells for right around that $1,100,000 range. So right off the bat, you just have to make sure that that is in your budget. The riding position we have here is a little bit more forward than upright and we don't have any sort of step through or anything. So if you were somebody who had back problems, knee problems, and you wanted to have more of that upright riding experience with a low step through, then this isn't the bike for you. The bike's also a class two e-bike, meaning that you could pretty much ride this anywhere, even in some of those states that have stricter laws when it comes to the classes of e-bikes that they allow on the streets and on different riding surfaces. The bike also weighs about 48 pounds and the battery adds another seven. So in total, you're looking at about 55 pounds and you just wanna make sure that this is something you feel comfortable lifting if you're gonna be moving it in and out of a vehicle. As far as the fit of this bike, we'll just go over some of those geometry measurements. Now we're not gonna give an overview on how to measure yourself for a bike. There's plenty of good resources out there on YouTube on how to measure yourself and what key components you should be looking at when you are trying to order a bike online and looking to fit that to you. So going back to those measurements, we've got a 16 inch seat tube, 19 inch reach, 31 inch stand over height, and that's kind of an important one, minimum saddle height of 30 inches, 36 inch maximum saddle height, 25.5 inch width on these handlebars being the widest point of the bike, a 47 inch wheelbase and a 72 inch length overall. Now they do only have this one red orange color. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm a fan of that. However, if you're looking to look for a bike that has multiple frame sizes, multiple colors, this isn't that bike. Next, let's talk about the motor. So the motor we have here is this rear hub 500 watt motor. And when I'm doing the ride test, I comment on this a little bit. But what I found was this motor was a little bit louder than most of the rear hub motors that we have tested, even comparing that to some of the 750s on, say, the Ecotrix or anytime we get our hands on a Bafang motor. So in my experience, you are going to get a little bit more noise here. However, I found that the motor was very responsive and had a little bit more of a sporty feel to it. Whereas some of these other motors, they will get up to the same speeds that this motor is capable of getting up to, but they just kind of ramp it up and it's a little bit slower. So when I'm comparing it to some of these other motors, uh, it really does come down to the controller. However, the way it's interpreted on the user end, it feels like it has a little bit more torque, a little bit more get up and go. And I felt like it's able to reach those speeds a little bit faster. I'm not 100% sure who makes this motor for GoTrax. Uh, just in my experience, you know, it was a little bit louder. Nothing, you know, too terrible, just something I noticed. And it was a little bit zippier than some of the other ones that we've tested. Next, let's talk about the battery. I'm not 100% positive the brand of the battery. However, we do know all the specs here. It is a 48 volt battery, 10 amp hours, giving us about 480 watt hours of battery. Takes about five hours for a full charge and you should be able to get anywhere between 17 miles to 30 miles depending on how you use the bike and your terrain. And in my experience with the bike riding it around, I feel like those ranges are probably pretty close to accurate. Next, let's talk about the brakes. The brakes we have here are Fallel mechanical disc brakes and we've got 160 millimeter rotors both on the front and the rear. Usually we comment on mechanical disc brakes versus hydraulic disc brakes and with this one, I feel like only going up to those 20 miles per hour, this being a bike that is pretty much lighter than most of the bikes that we've tested, especially comparing them to those full suspension, fat tire e-bikes that we test a lot. Having these mechanical disc brakes, not really a big deal in my opinion. When I was out doing my ride test, I found that they were able to stop the bike when I wanted to, and I don't have any complaints about them. Next, let's talk about the gears. So up here on the right-hand side, we've got this Shimano 1x7 SIS index shifter. You guys know I'm a big fan of these things, super easy to use, and yeah, I'm a big fan. The one thing I'm not a huge fan of is the Shimano SIS index derailleur on the back. So normally when we have these SIS index shifters, they are paired with a Shimano Altus, a Shimano Tourney, you know, something like that. But back here, we've got the Shimano SIS index derailleur. And I found that this one was 
adequate. Like it did the job that I needed to do as far as moving the chain around, but it was a little bit louder than some of the other ones. I felt like with those sprockets that they have in there, I was able to hear every single time it was passing the chain. You could just kind of always hear that like a constant noise. Now, I don't know if this noise was something that just sort of added to the motor and maybe why I noticed the motor noise a little bit more, uh, but I could definitely tell the difference between the motor noise and then also the derailleur noise. Again, it did its job. It's just a little bit louder than some of the other ones. Next, let's talk about the extras. The biggest extra, in my opinion, is this front light. Now, one of the reasons I like this front light is it is internally routed through the frame and connected to the battery. So this is something that you can turn on and off from the display. The front light here isn't the brightest, though I feel like it could do the job if you were going around in a neighborhood and you had some other ambient lighting going on. I wouldn't feel super uncomfortable riding this bike there. But if you were out in you know, the pitch black and you wanted to go up to 20 miles per hour, it's probably not bright enough for me to feel super safe and confident doing that. Next, let's talk about the essentials. The Traveler comes with everything you need to put it together. It has Allen keys, it has a screwdriver. It's also got this really nifty multi-tool thing. I don't really know what to call it. I guess it's really more of a multi-wrench. It's kind of flat, kind of thin, and has a bunch of these different sizes and a little bit clunky to work with. However, it was able to fit into all the spots I needed it to fit into, and I didn't have to grab any of my own tools to put this bike together. It also comes with two keys, the charger, pedals, and a user manual. Next, let's talk about the suspension. So we do have this front fork suspension, this Partner 29 inch front fork suspension here. It's not adjustable. And I found that in my riding around, for the most part, it was fine. It's definitely a little bit squishy. However, if you were gonna be going into some different terrains and wanted to go a little bit faster or the top speed of you know 20 miles per hour, I do feel like you lose a little bit of control, just how it's set up out of the box. So definitely not something you'd wanna be taking off of jumps or even into a mountain bike park. And the main reason here is because of these front forks. Next, let's talk about the butt suspension. So the saddle we have here is this Hengda Sport saddle. And I found that it wasn't necessarily too comfortable or not too comfortable, kind of right in the middle. Uh, definitely something I wouldn't mind riding around, but probably not my favorite seat that I've ever tested. We don't have anything extra like the little carrying hand on the back, which is something I'm a fan of, but it does the job. The other part of suspension we like to talk about is the tires. So the tires we have here are these Seiyun 29s. They can inflate anywhere between 40 to 65 PSI or 2.8 to 4.6 bar. Regular Schrader valves. Now with these tires, we don't have anything like extra puncture protection or the sidewall reflective stripes. I felt like I had plenty of grip when I was riding around on the concrete. However, if this is something where you're gonna wanna take it into those dirt places, into those somewhat rocky places, then you'd probably also wanna update to some different tires, a little bit bigger, a little bit knobbier to give you some extra traction. Next, let's talk about the controls. So the controls we have here are fairly simple. We have got this on off button down here. Now we don't have any digital readout display and that's sort of unfortunate because I feel like this is one of the areas that the bike is lacking in. We talked about those front forks, but the display here really does sort of lack, especially with all of the options available. Even if we had a very small readout display with, you know, again, like a simple like two, three button setup, I feel like that would elevate the bike just that much more without adding too much cost in in the meantime. So getting back to this display, it's got this on off button. It has got these four lights that show us how much power we have. We've also got the light on and off button, which is nice, I mentioned that. And then the mode button, which changes us between off, low, medium, and high. I don't really have any complaints other than I wish we had a display that had you know some different readouts there. So when I'm doing the ride test, I'm just kind of guessing on some of the speeds that I'm hitting in those different modes. And it'd be nice to be able to know how fast I was going with a display that had a digital readout. And that's gonna cover it for the nuts and bolts of the bike. Let's go ahead and send it out to myself for the ride test. What is happening, guys? We are out here for the ride test on the Traveler from GoTrax. Gonna head off into a different spot of town. See if we can't see what this bike is all about. So first off, just for being a hardtail bike, this particular one is actually fairly comfortable to ride. You know, we've got those 29 inch tires, giving us a little bit better of an attack angle for sticks and stumps and bumps, all that stuff. And then we've got these front forks up here. Now they're not adjustable. And in my honest opinion, they're a little bit too squishy for most of the riding that I do. 
And if you wanted to get into a place where you were going to be hitting some, you know, some rocks and some bumps going at speed, it might feel like you, you know, lose a little bit of control there just with the amount of squishiness they are. Now, if you are just riding around, you know, in town looking for a comfortable ride, you know, they, they do the job really well. So we are going to, I guess, just wait to stoplight forever. But once it goes green, we'll go and I'll show you what this bike is capable of doing. Now, right off the bat, a couple things that I've noticed are the motor here is a little bit more, it's a little bit louder than some of the other motors we've tested. However, it is very zippy getting up to those top speeds. And so for me, somewhat of a trade-off, but personally, I like the zippiness. I'm not a huge, I don't really care that much if it, uh, you know, it's a little bit noisier than say some of the other motors. So not a big deal in my opinion. Look at me riding around these shopping centers. Feel like feel more like Mike Atoll every day. Every day. It's not even on purpose. So let's go ahead and turn the power assist off here. And we'll shift down a little bit here. And let's see what this bike is capable of doing. If you run out of power, when it's just like a bike. Now we're here in first gear. Another thing I noticed kind of along my comment of the noise is that SIS index derailleur back here, which I'm pretty sure that's the first one that I've tested. Normally we see the Altus or the other ones for some reason I'm blanking on right now. But yeah, this is my first time doing that and it's a little bit noisier. I don't know if the, the, the cog wheels in there are just a little bit louder than normal, but I feel like I can almost always hear them passing the chain along. Again, not really a huge deal to me, but if you're looking for something that's super quiet, um, you know, the motor's a little bit louder than normal and that derailleur's a little bit louder than normal. So as far as shifting through this bike, everything went super smooth. I haven't made any adjustments, so out of the box, you're getting a nice solid shift here. And let's go ahead and put it into pedal assist low. Now, one of the unfortunate things about this particular display is it's not gonna tell us how fast we're going. I do like the simplicity of, hey, I know how much power I have. I know what mode I'm in. You can turn the light off and on here, which is nice, but it would be nice to know how fast we're going. So right now I'm estimating I'm going about seven or eight miles per hour, and then we can go ahead and put it into medium. And again, with that zippiness, I feel like it really goes up to the next level when you are shifting up to a, uh, a higher level there. And that's probably about 11, 12 miles per hour. And then to get that full 20 miles per hour, we'll put it up into high mode. And then we have about a half a second so we stop pedaling till when the motor stops giving us stuff, which is kind of nice. So from a safety perspective, that's pretty nice. So if you let off the pedals, you're not gonna be going for an extra three, four, five seconds, smashing into buildings or other riders. So just something to keep in mind. Now let's go ahead and put it off and we'll test out the throttle. So when this is off, the throttle is not gonna work. So this is somewhat of a safety for the throttle when we don't have the bike on or we don't have the pedal assist on. Put it into low mode and pull this down. And again, kind of hitting that seven mile per hour-ish. And it pretty much just gets to seven miles per hour. Again, it goes up to speed, not a whole lot of ramping going on here. And then as soon as we go up into medium, we're gonna pick up, get that 11, 12 miles per hour going. And finally in high mode, gonna hit that 20 mile per hour pretty easily. Go ahead and do a little, little braking. A little bit of skidding there at the end, but it was pretty much controlled, probably right around that nine, 10 foot mark, going about 20 miles per hour. You probably slowed a little bit going into that corner there. 
But as far as the brakes go, you know, pretty nice. They are mechanical as opposed to hydraulics, but you know, they're super easy and simple to uh, use and, and work on. You don't gotta invest money into a bleed kit or anything like that, which is nice. Go ahead and stop over here. The thing I do like about this bike, because for me, it's sort of like the Ecotrek Vortex, except for a few key upgrades. So the first one is we do have a light. So we've got this light up here and it does go into the battery, which is nice. So we can turn it on and off here. You don't gotta get down to click any buttons or anything. And the frame design is also a little bit nicer as well because we've got that internal cabling, which I'm a big fan of. You know, when you look at this bike from the side, it's very slick, you know, with all those cables running through the frame. Now, we don't have any bottle cage bosses or anything, um, either on the top of the damp tube or, you know, underneath. However, it just kind of makes it a little bit more streamlined. You know, I, I feel like we have the option to put some bottle cage bosses here and maybe that's something you would consider. Um, but just so you know, there's not any really good you know, there's nothing that comes here that you can mount a bottle with. So you'd have to get some sort of third party mounting point solution. And you know, if, if uh, having a water bottle is not that big of a deal to you, then don't worry about it. You just get that nice, sexy, sleek look and uh, you call it a day. The other thing to consider about this bike, if you're gonna be taking it in places where, you know, you're gonna be dealing with maybe puddles or dirt, places like that, it doesn't come with fenders. Now there's points where you can mount fenders but they don't come with the bike so again if you're gonna be looking at riding around in that sort of place um, just know that you're gonna have to get those fenders aftermarket all right guys that is gonna do it for our review of the traveler from go tracks if you want to know more about them I will have a link to their website down below and if you got any questions about this bike or there's something I didn't cover in the review please let me know I love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one